Well, happy uh for happy day of um uh, happy feast of tabernacles. <laughs> yeah. Feast of tabernacles, the last the last day of the feast of tabernacles. Um, it's the eighth day. Most high God, if we look at uh we read it last week, but if we look at um Leviticus chapter twenty three, we don't have to get it, but Leviticus chapter twenty three, it gives us um seven days, and then it says a uh, eighth day. All right, so this will be the eighth day of the feast, the last day of the feast. Um, we appreciate the Most High God uh, for giving it to us. This is another day we can come together and hear and learn of the Word of Truth that's given to the mo given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father, to the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In Him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, so lest anyone should boast. And given freely as a gift to all who obey Him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe in this state. You should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. That said, peace to the saints that are in the room that are not in the room, to the saints that are watching in on the camera, to the saints that are, uh, um, not in the chat, uh, and to the to the saints that are scattered all the way around the world that um, may not know about us nor we about them, but y'all be with them. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Right? So let's talk about the great day, right? First of all, or I call it it's it's the eighth day. The law calls it the eighth day, but uh the gospel called it the great grab um Grab uh, John chapter seven verse uh, John chapter seven verse thirty seven. This is John chapter seven verse thirty seven. Matter of fact, give me mm, maybe John chapter seven verse twenty nine. Eh, that's too far up. Give me John chapter seven verse thirty two. Now just give me thirty seven. It's all right. We don't have to get up. This is John chapter seven verse thirty seven. What did the book say? You said verse thirty-nine, thirty-seven. John chapter, uh, yeah, John chapter seven, verse thirty-seven. In the last day. That great day of the feast, Yahshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Right. So he said that last day, that great day of the feast, or that's why we call it the great day. Right? We've named it based off of, you know what I'm saying, what what was written about Yahushua. It was referred to as that great day of the feast, because it's that last day. So that eighth day is also called the great day. But it didn't watch what what is good too, though. Watch what it say. It's a it say then Yahushua he cried out. What happened? If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Uh huh. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right. So one of the things that we take for granted sometimes is the book requires us not just to believe. A lot of people believe, but it's not it's not just about believing whatever you want to believe about the Messiah or about anything. We have to believe very specific. Our belief has to be based off of what the scripture says. Read it again. Watch this. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right? So you have to be able to align your belief to what the scriptures say if you want this promise. He's attaching this promise only to those who believe on him as the scriptures say. Right? Grab uh, Romans chapter uh, 10. This is Romans chapter 10. Jump on down to verse. Uh, what is it? Probably verse 12, verse 11, maybe. And after that, give me uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Right? Our belief cannot be abstract. 
right? A lot of stuff, a lot of people like abstract because there's not a lot of boundaries, right? You can kind of, you can define it as you go. And that's what, that's what a lot of these religions are. They define it as they go, right? They make it up as they go, right? They defend it. They defend, they defend whatever they believe based off of whatever is occurring at that time. But our, our belief can't be that. Not the belief that's attached to the promise that Yahushua just has, right? If we want the spirit to flow out of us like living waters, then that, that, ha that comes with a, a very strict condition. We have to believe on him as the scripture says. Watch this. This is uh, Romans chapter 10, verse what? 11, 12? 12. This is uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 12. Watch what the book says. No, we'll do 11. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Watch this. No, no, we're going to do 10. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Watch what the no, book we're say. We're going to do 9. My bad. <laughs> Romans bad. chapter 10, verse 9. Watch what the book say. Because I, I keep reading before. I'm like, no, nah, we got to get that too. <laughs> <laughs> that if thou confess with thy mouth, who uh, Yahushua, the master, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right? So now this is this is Paul telling him, he said, listen, it, all you got to do is confess with your mouth that Yahushua is the master. Right? So that's it. All that looked like is Jesus Christ, you are Lord. Right? That's the, that's the first piece of it. If you confess with your mouth that Yahushua, the Messiah, is the master. Right? That's condition one. This is what Paul is telling us. Right? Still, we can't forget what Yahushua just told you. You have to believe on him as the scripture has said. Right? But watch Paul. People will take this and they'll try to say, see, it's not that deep. Y'all being, uh, what they call us? Legalistic. Legalistic. What's the other one they be? You? Oh, y'all, it's about the spirit, not the letter. You know what they're telling you? It's about the spirit, not the letter. So you focus on the letter of the law rather than the spirit. This is what they do. So look, the Yahushua says you have to believe on me as the scripture said, right? And then here it's telling you, Confess with your mouth that Yahushua is the master. Just, just say it. You know what I'm saying? Say it out loud. You know what I'm saying? Yahushua is the master. And then after that, right, believe on him from the heart. Let's hear more. That God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. Uh-huh. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay. But the so he said your belief has to take you to righteousness. That's another requirement, right? So if you believe, it has to be from the heart, and that has to take you to righteousness. That means that your behavior has to change. But Paul ain't done. Watch this. But the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Mm -hmm. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How mm -hmm. shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For they have not Lord all Lord. obeyed the gospel, right? There is no way you can hear the gospel unless it comes from a teacher that was sent from God. That's why he goes through all that. A lot of the stuff that people would believe in didn't come from God. It didn't follow that chain. Go back up to the chain. What verse is that? How then 13. Should call on him? What verse is it? 14. 14. This is uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Watch this. He said, how then what? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How so how believe? in the world can you call on, look, you say, I confess, Yahushua is master. But how can I confess that if I don't even believe? Right? And then watch what he asks you next. How shall they call on him and who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? So now the next person going to say, no, 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 no. I confess Yahushua is the master. And I believe that. Right? I believe him. Right? But... Then the question was, what? How can they believe on who what? On him of whom they have not heard. So you believe, but you haven't even heard. So then that guy's going to be like, no, nah, but I heard. Right? Watch what he say next. How shall they hear without a preacher? Right? So the next one be like, I heard. Right? And we're going to be like, well, how you hear? And you ain't even got a preacher. Then watch what he say next. How shall they preach except they be sent? 
And then that's going to be like, no, I got a preacher, right? And that's true. There's a lot of preachers out there, a lot of pastors out there, a lot of people talking about the word, right? But are these men and women sent from God? So he's asking you, do you follow the whole chain? Because it has to start from somebody who's sent from the most high God. Then they have to preach to you. And then when they preach it, you have to actually hear it. And then after you hear it, you have to believe it. Then after you believe it, then you can confess. If it doesn't follow that strict chain, if at any point the, the preacher is not sent from the most high God, right? Or the preacher preaches the word that you do not hear, right? Or what you, what you heard, you did not believe. Or what you believe, you didn't confess, right? If anything along those lines is broken, then that ruins the whole thing. So then that's why he's telling you many have not believed the gospel. I mean, I'm sorry, obeyed the gospel. Read that. What is that? Verse 15. Uh, 16. 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Watch this. Man says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It has to be based off of the scripture, just like Yahushua says. What you you will have this promise that the spirit will flow through you like living waters. If you believe on me as the scripture has said, right? Paul come back, double down on it and says, listen, they haven't all obeyed the gospel. You know what? Grab uh second Corinthians chapter 11, verse one. He said they haven't all obeyed the gospel, right? He said, because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing coming from, I don't know, the word of Yah. So in other words, faith being belief, you have to believe it based off of the word. Yahushua was saying the exact same thing. You can't, you, you can't get the promise unless you believe on him according to what the scriptures say. So that means you can't just make up stuff. You can't, you can't just walk around and be like, oh yeah, no, he's uh, three gods in one, a triune God. Like the Christians be doing or like the Hebrew Israelites be doing. You can't pop up and be like, no, nah, he ain't God, brother. He just a he just a prophet. Neither one of those work, because guess what? We got scripture that calls him the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father. And this is a child that is born. Right. So that means whoever your Messiah is. Got to line up with, he has to be a child that was born, that was also called the mighty God, an everlasting father. If you, if your, if your testimony is that, 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 that he's not God, then that means you are not in line with scripture. You not believe it on them as the scripture say. Right? It's important that we understand these things because a lot of the stuff that people start believing in, they think they believe in something, but man, they didn't hear it from somebody who was sent. Right? This is a uh, this is a uh, Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Give me verse one. Would to God you could bear with me in a little folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous of you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to the Messiah. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. For if he that cometh preaches another Yahushua unto, unto whom we have not, have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received of another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Right? So he said, listen, if they come to you talking about a different Yahushua, right? Or if you see a different spirit, or if you hear a different gospel, your butt might, might, might well put up with it. You might just be like, no, that sounds interesting. And that's exactly what's happening now. Paul called that thing 2,000 years ago. That boy called it. He's looking like, listen, I'm trying to make sure it's straight. So hear me out right now. 
if somebody else come to y'all saying some wild stuff, you're gonna go along with it. So let me let me set the record straight is what he's trying to say. Right? And that's what happens, right? Paul is saying if anybody, he don't say it here, but he said if anybody, oh, I think maybe he do say it here. Keep reading. Well, I suppose I was not behind the very chiefest apostles, not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be ruled in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an office in the abasing myself that you might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God. No, nah, this ain't that. Go, uh, go to, uh, go to, uh, uh, jump on down. Uh, it should say something about, uh, even Satan turns himself to an angel of light. Maybe verse 12. For what verse is it? Oh, we'll go to, we'll go to 12. This is, uh, this is, uh, second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Watch the book say real quick. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they might be found even as we. For such mm -hmm. are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of the Messiah. The and only no way these liars get legitimacy is by looking like the real ones. That's the only way they get legitimacy. So you can't be fooled by saying, it sounds like y'all saying the same thing. That's how it's supposed to sound. Right? It's supposed to sound like everybody is saying the same thing. But if they're disagreeing, trust me, they're not saying the same thing. If you got me arguing against some other brother who calls himself a teacher and we disagree and you a listener and you're not familiar with the book, but you hear it. And it's like, man, it sounds like y'all pretty much saying the same thing. Trust me, if two people disagree, they are not saying the same thing. But what you have to understand is the whole purpose of Satan. Is to make it look as real as possible. So yes, it will look and feel very similar. But it's not. Watch what he says. And no wonder, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no, no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Right? So Satan himself makes himself out to be an angel of light. That's where the myths come from. These people came up with the myth that Satan used to be God's most glorious angel. Hmm. What is Paul talking about? That's a lie. But Satan transforms himself to be an angel of light. He's never been an angel of light. But he makes himself appear that way. Then he got all these people believing lies. Right? Grab uh, Galatians. This is Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. That's what I really wanted. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. Right. We have to believe on him as the scripture has said. Otherwise, you don't get the promise. Right. That promise is not available to just anybody. Right. You can't just you can't just walk around and say, you know what? Hey, as long as you believe in Christ, brother. Well, how can you believe if you have not heard? And how can you hear if you don't have a preacher? And how do you have a preacher if he was not sent? Therefore, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Yah. Right? There's the, that's the only way you get it. So anything that you believe, it's not good enough for me to just say, oh, as long as you believe in Yah or believe in Yahushua, that's not good enough because we have to say, okay, well, hold on. Which Yahushua? Because we just heard Paul tell us in 2 Corinthians, that man, listen, if somebody come to y'all, come and talk to y'all about a different Yahushua, y'all might well put up with it. Y'all gonna mess around. Y'all gonna like it. Y'all gonna think that's good doctrine. If they talk to you about a different gospel, he's telling you it's different versions of this stuff that's gonna go out and people gonna, gonna, gonna eat it up. We have to be more vigilant. We have to say, you know what? No, no, no. What does the scripture say? Is it lining up with the word? Right. This is Galatians chapter one, verse eight. Right. Is it lining up with the word? But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you. Why would he say we or an angel from heaven? Why would he have to cover the angel from heaven? Because he just told us over in Corinthians, man, even Satan make himself out to be an angel of light. You might fool. You might fall for it. You get a darn vision. You know, you a regular darn human being. Ain't never had a vision in your darn life. 
You hear about people getting visions all the time in a book. You hear about these people at church lying, talking about they got visions. So you sleep in your bed, you wake up, and there's a clear vision. You know this is supernatural. And an angel come up to you. And the angel say, hello, Muhammad, I am Gabrielle. Right? And then your stupid butt as Muhammad sit up and you say, let me write the whole Quran. And this angel tell you to do it. But your dumb butt don't listen to the gospel that tell you, even if an angel keep going. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. He said, even if an angel come to you and they talking something different than what I just told you, then let them be accursed. So tell me how a Christian going to turn around and say, it don't matter as long as you believe in Christ, we're all in the same united. We, we have unity. That's a lie. You not believing on them as the scripture has said, which means your butt really don't believe. You run in your mouth, but your butt really don't believe. This thing is big. That's what the great day is about. The great day is a shadow of things to come. Right? The great day represents when Yahushua takes the kingdom. It's the same prophecy. Go to uh, Daniel chapter 2. It's the same prophecy that was given to Daniel. This is Daniel chapter 2. I don't want the whole thing, but give me, let's just read the first part. This is Daniel chapter 2. Give me verse. Mm, it's been too long. Uh, probably look around verse 17. I just want where, where, the, where he tells him the dream. I want to say probably start like around. It's a long chapter. The last verse is probably like what, 50 something? I want to say like the last verse, probably like 50, 60 something. So I think the dream probably starts somewhere around 20. The last verse is 49. 49. So then, so then, yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, try like 15, verse 15. Maybe it's higher than that. Maybe, maybe verse, verse 10, verse 15. Is that where the dream starts? Mm, the dream starts at the beginning. Do you want when Daniel start telling them about it? Yeah, when Daniel tell them the dream. Because he wouldn't, he wouldn't. So this is Nebuchadnezzar talking to Daniel. Daniel went into captivity and, and Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to tell anybody what the dream was. Right. So he wanted Daniel to tell him what the dream was and tell him the meaning of it. But it's like, that's not usually how it go. Usually I say, Hey, I had a dream about X, Y, and Z. And then I say, can you interpret that for it? Can you tell me what God trying to tell me in that dream? But Nebuchadnezzar was skeptical of his wise men and skeptical of his magicians. So he is like, no, I'm not telling nobody because y'all going to tell me whatever I want to hear. Instead, you have to, one, tell me what the dream was that I had without me telling you a word. And two, you have to tell me what the dream meant. And he said, if, if y'all can't do it, I'm killing all of y'all. So then they was like, look, we all about to die. Daniel was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I serve the most high God. I'll give him the dream. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let me get, let, let me get a crack at it. So then they sent them in there. And then the most high God gave Daniel the whole thing. He gave him the dream that Pharaoh had, I mean, uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had. And then after that, uh, Daniel was able to, to give him the interpretation of it. Right. So this is, uh, what verse? 31. This is verse 31. This is, this is Daniel chapter two, verse 31. What's the book say? Thou old king saw us and behold a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, and his legs of iron, and his feet part of iron and clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut cut out with cut out without hands, which a stone was what? Cut out without hands. So that means you gotta believe. Yahushua, as the scripture has said, right? When we talk about the great day, we're talking about a stone that was cut out of a mountain without hands, right? We don't have to get it, but if we talk about this later on in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chapter, what it's telling you is that is the kingdom of God. 
So the kingdom of God is created without hands. That means this is a spiritual thing. If you don't believe this the way the scripture said, you're not going to understand none of this stuff and you won't be flowing with living waters like, like Yahushua promised. Right? It, you, you have to understand how this stuff plays out. Grab, uh, grab Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Let's talk about how Yahushua was created without hands. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Right? Daniel chapter 2 tells us that Nebuchadnezzar, it gives us the imagery of Nebuchadnezzar, this huge statue of Nebuchadnezzar, right? Or, or a huge statue of a figure, at least. And at the top represented Nebuchadnezzar, this gold top. But after that, it kind of degrades more and more, right? So it starts off gold. Then it's like silver. Then it's like bronze, right? Then after that, it goes down and it becomes, you know what I'm saying, iron and clay and all these different things mixed up. So the vision showed that this stone that was made without hands comes and crushes this whole this whole figure. Right. And Daniel is explaining like this happens in the latter days. Right. That this kingdom becomes established. This kingdom that's made without hands. Right. This is Matthew chapter one. He uh, started verse 18. Now the birth of Yahushua was on this wise. When uh -huh. his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. When they say espoused, it means that they was like engaged. So and when they say before they came together, it means that before they had sex. So she was overcome by the Holy Ghost, right? The Holy Spirit. Watch this. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example was minded to put her away privately right so then you know what i'm saying when he saw that she was pregnant he thought she cheated on him because he's looking like this is before we came together right this is before we came together how are you pregnant she said man it was the holy spirit he looking like man if you don't knock it off talking to me what do you mean some holy you've never heard of nothing like that before Right. We've never heard of nothing like like somebody just getting pregnant with no sexual. You're a virgin. You've never had sex and you got pregnant. Woman, I had you darn stone. But you know what? Being a just man. Right. I'm not going to have you stone. I'm going to put you away privately. So he was ready to write her, according to our law, the bill of divorcement, because our law says if a woman is found to be unclean after marriage, then you can write her a bill of divorcement. And that's what he was going to do, because she would be unclean because. It it a look it it, appear, it appeared as though she had sex with someone, right? And he was expect he was a spouse to a virgin, right? So instead of having her stone, he was just like you know what I'm gonna put her away private. So that's what he went to do. But watch what happened. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Right. So now the angel had to come to him. And tell him something. Now, Joseph is, he has to follow the same thing that Paul said later after Joseph was born, right? He had to follow the same thing. If an angel come to you talking some nonsense, then you got to be like, no. Nah. So Joseph could have done that. He could have looked at that and be like, no, I've never heard of no, no, that don't make no sense. But who knows? Maybe Joseph knows the scripture, right? Maybe Joseph familiar with, watch this, keep going. And, he, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahushua, for he shall save people from their sins. Uh-huh. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Right? So maybe Joseph knew about that scripture in Isaiah, where it says, he going to bring forth a child from a virgin. Right. So a virgin is going to have a child and he shall name him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Right. Perhaps Joseph was aware of that and he said, oh, this lines up so he don't have to question the angel because it lines up with the scripture. Right. It's consistent with what the scripture say. Right. Or maybe he's uh, go to uh, 
Go to uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 22. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22, right? Because he could be also familiar with it. Listen, an angel can't come. Nothing can come. I try to tell, I try to tell people all the time, right? Satan can duplicate. You have to assume that Satan can duplicate anything. You just have to assume it. You have to assume that Satan can trick your butt about anything. The only thing you can trust, right? The only thing you know that he's never going to try to trick you about is being righteous. He's never going to tell you, no, do exactly what y'all told him to do. No, he'll try to undermine what y'all told you to do. He'll try to make you believe that what y'all told you to do don't mean what it really means. But he's never going to cause you to be righteous. So the first thing you need to do is just understand what do I need to do? What does Yah require of me? And then you watch Satan try to take you off of that. That's how you identify it. It's very, very simple. It's difficult in practice because of our habits. But it's very, very, very simple. Right? This is what I need to be doing. Anything that tries to pull me away, I don't care what it is. Anything that tries to pull me away from that, boom, you're of the devil. Boom, you're of the devil. Anything that takes me away from God's plan, you are of the devil. Right? And you can keep moving with confidence if you think like that. It takes time, but you have to do that. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. Watch the book say. This is what Joseph might have been familiar with. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For Yahuwah uh -huh. created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall Look, Yahuwah created something new in the earth. What did he do? A woman shall compass a man. Thus he said, look, I'm going to do something new in the earth. Damn, well, I wonder what he's going to do. A woman is going to encompass a man. Well, that's not new. Every man is born of a woman. But what he's telling you is, this is going to happen in a new way. This is going to happen in a way that it's never happened before. Maybe Joseph was looking like, oh, you know what? He's pregnant. He's encompassing a boy, right? According to what this angel was saying. And you know what? I remember the scripture to say a new thing is going to happen. A woman is going to encompass a man. Maybe this is what it's talking about. He wouldn't have to question the angel if he knows these scriptures. So that's why Joseph may have gone along with it. Right? Grab a uh, grab a uh, grab a uh, second second Samuel chapter uh second Samuel chapter seven. You got to help me out because I don't know exactly where it's at. It's uh Second Samuel chapter seven. I want probably maybe verse yeah, eleven, ten. Should be when y'all respond, right? So at the beginning of the chapter, David, David gonna say. You know what I'm saying? Look, man, I, I want to buy. I want to buy. I want to buy. I want to. I want to build y'all a house. He wants to build Yahuwah a whole house. He want to build a temple, right? So he put his mind to do that. He asked Nathan the prophet. Was it Nathan the prophet? Yeah. He asked Nathan the prophet, and Nathan was like, "Hey, look, do everything that I think he said. Do, do everything that's in your heart." Then after that, you know what I'm saying? He came back a little bit later because the Most High God talked to Nathan. Was like, "No, no, 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 no. I'll go correct that." Then he had to come back and he had to go, <laughs> excuse me, he had to go tell David, like, no, 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 no. This is what y'all said. He said, you ain't building him a house. He going to build you a house. So give me that part. Where it started? Uh, uh, I just want y'all to see that the stone, that the stone that was made without hands represents the kingdom of God, right? And then I want y'all to see that Yahushua was born of a virgin, right? That had to happen, right? That had to happen for multiple reasons. Watch this. This is, what is it? We do verse six. This is second, second uh, Samuel, verse six. That seemed like too far up. But this is second Samuel chapter seven, verse six. Let's see what the book says. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in the tent and in the tabernacle. 
In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, Israel, saying, why build ye not me a house to, of cedar? Now, right, y'all are saying, look, all this time, it's been hundreds of years that I've been in a tent, right? Y'all had the tabernacle that Moses built, right? All these years, but I've never asked y'all to build me a temple or anything, you know what I'm saying, more permanent. He said, I just never asked for it. Right, watch this. Keep going. Now, therefore, so thou, so shalt thou say unto my servant David. Thus says you who of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest, and that, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great man that are on the earth. Moreover, mm -hmm. I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them. They they shall dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict him anymore as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also Yahuwah telleth thee that he will make thee a house. And when the days be fulfilled and you shall sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Right? So now he told him something. He said, one, it's going to happen after you die. Right? So that's one requirement. Then the next requirement was, it's going to, um, although it happens after you die, it's going to happen. Give me one second. Although it happens after you die, he said, it's going to happen. And it's going to, the, the one that it happens is going to be your seed and he got to come out of your bowels. So it has to be a descendant. This prophecy is set up to be in a descendant of David, right? And then he also has to have, he has to come after uh david dies right keep going watch this he shall build a house for my name and i will establish the throne in his kingdom forever i will be his father and he shall be my son if he commit iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men so he said i will be what men. i will be his father and he shall be my son that got that i will be his father so look it's an entry we take all this stuff for granted right what the most high God just told you is one, he gotta have he like the person I'm talking about is gonna be set up after you die. That's one, right? Two, the individual has to be your descendant, right? Has to be a descendant of David, right? Then three, I have to be his father. That's a very, very tricky thing because God is not a descendant of David. So how can God be his father while at the same time, David being his great, 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 great grandfather? Right. I can't think of a way that this is possible. Unless it happens through Mary. Right. Unless it happens through the mother. So that's why the Holy Spirit had to come over Mary and make her pregnant. Now, God is the father. Mary is of the tribe of Judah and married to a man from Judah, which now in two ways connects her lineage right back to David. So now Yahushua ends up being not only the son of David. Right. And also the son of Adam, right? Son of man. Grab uh, Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter three, verse thirty-eight. We ain't gonna read all the genealogy, but this Luke chapter three goes through all the genealogy. We just gonna read the very last one. This is Luke chapter three, verse thirty-eight. Right. So he's not only the son of David. We also about to see that he's the son of Adam. Which was the son of Enoch, which was Enoch, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. And Adam was also the son of God. Right. But because Yahushua was born of a virgin, he is the son of Adam. Through Mary, the son of David through Mary, 
but the son of God by the spirit, because there was no man involved. He was created without hands. Right. Let's see if we can make it more clear. Grab, grab, uh, grab Genesis chapter three, verse 15. This is Genesis chapter three, verse 15. Watch the punishment that Yah put on, uh, put between the, uh, the serpent and between, um, uh, 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 Eve, sorry, the serpent and Eve. Watch this. This is Genesis chapter three, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall right? be thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So you see that Yah recognizes it's her seed. He's not looking at it like, oh, that's Adam's seed. He recognizes it as Eve's seed. In the same way, Yahushua is Mary's seed. Mary is a descendant of David. And is also a descendant of Adam. Right? So he retains that lineage with the help of Joseph, according to our law, right? Because the woman has to take on the, the lineage of, of uh, her husband, right? So Joseph being a man of Judah, also, right? A man of Bethlehem, right? He took on that identity through Mary, right? And now he's made without hands. But how else could you fulfill this prophecy? How else could you fulfill the prophecy that was given by Nathan to David saying that one, he has to show up after you die, right? Two, he has to be your descendant. He got to come from your bowels, right? And three, he got to be my son talking about the son of God, right? That's the only way this thing works. Keep going though. Watch this. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, what you read? Oh, her seed. Uh, go to Isaiah 53. This is Isaiah chapter 53. But you got to talk to these Hebrews too. All right. The Hebrews, the Hebrews, the Hebrews don't, don't believe that she, you know what I'm saying? She can, came from a virgin. So we deal with that. But then let's look at, let's look at, uh, let's look at what else the Hebrews don't think. Some of the Hebrews think, nah, you know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't, you know what I'm saying? No man can die for, for another man's sin. All right. You're not believing on the master scripture said. That's not, that's not, that's not even our law. Our law tell us, if you look at uh numbers chapter 30, our law tell us a specific circumstance where a man had died for another, uh, another sin. Right. This is um, Isaiah chapter 53. Start at verse one. Who has believed our report? Mm -hmm. To whom has the arm of Yahuwah been revealed? Mm -hmm. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness that when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He is mm -hmm. despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But we, his, we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and esteemed and we esteemed him not. Surely hath he borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the right. Of our what it's saying is, that. this is a prophecy. Way before all this stuff happened, what it's saying is, after Yahushua died, we looked at him like, dang, man, God did a number on him. You know what I'm saying? We looked at him like, dang, God punished that boy. Right? But he was bruised for our and our iniquities, our afflictions, he took on our pen, penalty. But the prophecy is telling us that we gonna look at him like, like man, God was rough on him, boy. He dang, had that boy crucified. I thought he is I myself crucified that boy. Sheesh, that was some harsh punishment. Not realizing that he's taking our punishment. Keep going. Watch this. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Right. So hold on. How are we going to say, according to the scripture, that a man can't take on another man's penalty like some of these Hebrews say? You don't believe on them as the scripture said. We even got laws. It said it right here. We even got laws on how to redeem your brother also. It's put the boy don't know the law. We got laws about how to redeem your brother. We got laws about about how to deal with a vow. 
and then you taking the penalty of the vow, the vow is not kept for your wife if you don't disannul it. Which is exact the exact imagery that the Most High God gives us throughout the whole book. How are we going to say this man ain't take our penalty? I can tell you how, because you don't believe on him as the scripture said. You, you don't got no promise coming to you. Keep going, watch this. All we, all we, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone his own way, and Yahuwah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the he was what? Not, he was cut off from the land of the living. He was cut off from the land of the living. Whatever Messiah you got, got to line up with the scriptures. Whatever Messiah you find, got to be cut off from the land of the living. If you got a Messiah who's going to jump on the scene and live forever and never die, then you are a liar and you believe the lie. Whatever Messiah you got, got to be cut off from the land of the living. Daniel told you two, two witnesses. Give me Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. This is Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. Give me, give me verse 23 just in case. This is Daniel chapter 9, verse 23. This is not a game. Like, you can't just... Pick and choose what you want to believe in the book. Well, you can. You can do whatever you want to do. But if you do it, you're a liar. You can't expect nothing from the Most High God. You can't expect the promise that he said, that if you believe on him as the scripture said, then your bellies will flow with living water as if it's a spirit. This is uh, Daniel chapter 9. Give me verse 23. At the beginning of, the, of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. And I came to show thee, but thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seven right? Years. Who came first, Daniel or Isaiah? Isaiah. So now when this angel come and he say, look, let me, let me help you understand this vision. Daniel has to be familiar with what Isaiah said. Because watch what happens. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins to make reconciliation for iniquity and bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and lo, and to appoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, and three mm -hmm. score, two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah shall the Messiah be cut off, but not He's going to be what? Cut off. So now Daniel would notice because he knows the scripture. So he's read Isaiah already. He said, oh, you know what? Isaiah 53 do talk about the Messiah got to be cut off. He's going to take our penalty. He's going to be cut off. Then watch what the angel tell uh, Daniel. He's going to be cut off in what? But not for himself. Oh, Daniel would have heard that and would have been like, yep, spot on. Because you can't just take, look, we have rules and y'all have to understand this stuff is very precise. It's not a game. This is not just some willy-nilly, like, oh, I'll believe whatever feels good to me. It doesn't work that way. This is not a game, right? If you got a prophet that come to you talking about, thus says Yahuwah, on what conditions can you believe him? Only after the thing comes to pass, right? So then Isaiah can pop up and he can say X, Y, and Z. Guess what? Isaiah. We'll put a pin in that until something that you say come to pass. Well, guess what? A whole bunch of stuff that Isaiah said about Israel and about uh, uh, Jerusalem and Judah and whole, all that came, a bunch of it came to pass, right? So then you say, all right, Isaiah is a solid prophet. What he said came to pass, right? So then you start to consider what his stuff says. An angel is different. An angel, we don't have that. We don't. The instruction for us is not like that for an angel, right? So then the angel come to us. We saw what Paul told. He said, listen, if an angel come telling you different, something different from what I told you, let him be a curse. So Daniel has to have that. Daniel didn't hear it from Paul, obviously, right? Paul comes after Daniel, well after Daniel. But ben, Daniel has to have that same mindset. 
that this angel has to line up with what the prophets have said. I don't care that you're an angel. I don't care that you got a glow to you. I don't care that it seems like you got superpowers. That don't mean nothing to me. You have to line up to what the, what the prophets say. So this angel come, and then the angel talks, and guess what it do? Line right on up. So then, all day you got to do is be like, oh no, the Messiah got to be cut off. Keep going, watch this. He got to be cut off in what? Shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So now he off. said, listen, it's going to come with a flood that he's talking about a bunch of people is going to overflow Jerusalem. And he said the temple is going to be destroyed. Right. So now whatever Messiah you come up with. He has to be believed on as the scripture said. So that means he got to be put to death. He got to be put to get put to death for somebody else's problem. So that means he couldn't have been guilty for what he did. Right. There's no way it don't line up with scriptures. If he got punished for his own stuff, if he committed a sin and, and they put him on a cross for that reason, because of sin that he committed, that's not our Messiah because they don't line up with the scripture. Right. So whatever, whatever he got accused of, it can't be true. Right. Whatever he got punished for, it can't be true. And then he, he would have had to die before the temple was destroyed. And let me tell you, the temple has already been destroyed. Two thousand years ago. So you got to tell me, where is your Messiah if it is not Yahushua? But if it is Yahushua, then believe on the man as the scripture has said. It's Ezekiel chapter 11. Watch this. It's Ezekiel chapter 11. Start me off at about verse 13. If you know the scripture, then you can believe on the man. Right? A lot of our problems is we don't know. Nobody has taught us the scripture. We haven't taken the time to actually read the scripture. This is Ezekiel chapter 11. Give me verse 13. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, died. Then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, oh, Lord, will thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? In this is, look. So look, the, 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 this is when the temple was destroyed by Babylon, right? And then Ezekiel said, man. Are you going to make a full end? Like you already got rid of the northern tribes. Because remember, Assyria came and took our brethren in the northern tribes. Right. And then our brethren in the southern tribes remain. And then Babylon came and took them. So now Ezekiel is looking like, oh, you getting rid of all of us? You going to make a full end? Everything that Isaiah was saying is right. Are you kidding me? Right. Watch this. The word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, and the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Be ye far from Yahuwah, unto us is the land given in possession. Therefore, mm -hmm. say, thus says Yahuwah God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen. And he said, I although I have cast them far off among the heathen. Watch what he say. Although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So this is even before the Messiah came. Yah says, listen, I, although I cast these boys off, I will be to them as a little sanctuary. Ezekiel thought he was talking about when Babylon destroyed the temple. Right? In actuality, he's talking about the Messiah. Right? When the Messiah popped on the scene, we don't have to get it. But in John chapter two, right, he said, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. They was befuddled looking at him like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It took 40 some years to build up this. How you going to rebuild? No, that's crazy. Right. They looking at it like that don't really make sense because it took 40 some years to rebuild the temple after Babylon destroyed it. How you going to? You telling us that you'll rebuild it in three days only is unbelievable. We couldn't believe it. They didn't know that he was talking about himself. 
He is the temple. He is the, the kingdom. He even told her, made without hands. He what happened? Well, he told the woman at the well, and he told his disciples in John like 15, I think, about the, the, the comforter. Oh, grab grab the woman at the well. John, this is John chapter 4. This is John chapter 4. Give me start at like verse 17. Real quick. This is John chapter 4, verse 17. That fits in perfect, right? We look at Ezekiel say, I will be a little sanctuary where you are. But watch what Yahushua say to the woman at the well. This is John chapter 4, verse 17. Watch what the book say. This is John chapter 4, verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Yahushua said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and that thou saidest truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So this is a Sumerian her, woman. So the Sumerian woman, remember, when the the king of Assyria came and took our our you know what I'm saying our our fathers from uh from uh the northern tribes, they took everybody from Ephraim, from Manasseh, from Zebulun, from from uh, all the all the 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 tribes of Galilee. You know what I'm saying, and and then took them and then pushed them over to uh all the different territories in Assyria, and they empire, and then replaced them with Gentiles, and then they sent one of our priests. One of the, the the false priests, right? The the priests of the north that you know they they had doing all types of wild stuff. They from that they learned from Jeroboam. They used those priests to teach them our law, right? So they got a distorted version of our law, and they're not our people. But they've started to adopt our identity, right? Just based off of what our priests would tell them, right? So then now they've been taught they need to worship in the mountains of Samaria, right? Keep going. Yahushua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Right? So she wanted to have an argument about who's right. Should we worship in this mountain or should, like y'all say, should we worship at the temple? Right? And Yahushua didn't even, he didn't entertain the debate. He looked like, listen, let me tell you something. It's going to be a time very soon, right? That is not going to be here or the mountain. But y'all got to worship in spirit and truth. What's happening is Yahushua has become a sanctuary. He has become the temple. So then the temple gets destroyed. That's why he said, listen, it's going to be a time soon that it won't be here or there because the temple going to be destroyed. Right. And everybody in Israel, all of, all of the Hebrews in Israel is going to be wiped off. Right. So he's trying to warn of that early. But this is the same thing that Yah is saying when he says, I will be a little sanctuary to you. He's telling you that Yahushua is the temple. Right? Made without hands. Right? The only way he could be made without hands is, you know what I'm saying? Well, he had to be born of a virgin. And he had to be born of a virgin because he has to be the son of God. That means the only thing that could have a participation in making him has to be the spirit. Other than that, you know what I'm saying? A woman is just the ground from which the seed grows, right? We don't have to get it, but when, when, when in Genesis chapter 2, when Adam was created, right? The Most High God formed him from the dirt, right? He formed him from the dirt, the ground, the land, and then he breathed life into him, the spirit. So he breathed the spirit into him and then Adam became a living being. Similarly, you have the woman, which is Mary, and Yah breathed the spirit into her, and now she's with child. Right? That made Adam the son of God, and that makes Yahushua the son of God. That's the only way this prophecy works. Everything that, everything that we got before, right, the sanctuary that 
that um, Moses put or the tabernacle. Grab uh, grab Hebrews chapter eight. Right. Hebrews chapter eight. We can start at verse one. Right. The tabernacle that Moses put together. That was all based off of patterns that he saw that was shown to him. Right. And same thing with uh, the temple. We don't have to get it, but uh, First Chronicles tells us that David got patterns from the Most High God and gave them to uh, Solomon. That was stuff that was shown to them. But it can't be the real thing because guess what? It has to be made without hands. These are all just shadows. This is Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. Of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, minister of the sanctuary and the and of the true tabernacle, which Yahuwah pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were, uh, were if he were on the earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Who serve unto the example in the shadow of heavenly things, as Moses is a what? Is a shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make the things according to the pattern showed of thee in the mount. But right. So that in the mountain he was shown a pattern of these things, and the Most High God admonished them. In other words, he warned them. He said, "Listen, make sure you make it according to the pattern that you saw." But Moses had to make this stuff with his hands by the hand of, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the men of God, the most high God set up, right? And then Moses set it up with his own hands. So that's why, pardon me, that's why it's a shadow. It's not the real thing. It's not the real substance. It's the shadow. Where well, the real substance is Yahushua, right? That's why Yahushua is saying, listen, the time going to come. It ain't going to be here nor there. Listen, you know what I'm saying? It gotta, what, what's really coming got to be of the spirit. In other words, it can't be made by hands right it's the only way for this thing to work out luke 17 give me verse 20 start at verse 20 this is it luke chapter 17 we're gonna start at, at, at verse 20 because we have to we have to be able to acknowledge and see how yah sets up this prophecy and how everything flows through and how precise it is the only reason that people can come up with all these wild doctrines and just say what they want to say is because they don't respect how precise the book is. They don't respect that every single thing is accounted for. Nothing that the most high God, you may not understand it. I may not understand it. I don't understand everything in the darn book, right? We may not understand all of it, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a meaning and a very specific fulfillment. A lot of this stuff that these people just willy nilly just like, oh, no, that's not a big deal. You know, Trinity and, yeah no, Jesus is not God and all these different wild theories these people be coming up with. It's not founded in the scripture. So it's just something that they made up based off of their opinion. Right. We have to be able to tie stuff back down to the scripture. This is Luke chapter 17. Give me verse 20. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Luke chapter 17, verse 20. When he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, Look, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Look, he said, say. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. In other words, it ain't going to be physical like you're going to see it. You are looking for something physical. You are looking for the kingdom to be built with hands. He's telling you. That this is not going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. But watch what he say next. Neither shall they say low here or low there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples. Listen, these people, these people make a mess out of this verse. They think the man is saying, well, everyone has the kingdom of God in you. No. What he's saying is, I am the kingdom. You're not going to be walking around saying, the kingdom is over there. It's on J Street. Let's go. He's not going to say, look over here, look over there. He is like, no, the kingdom of God is right here among you. In the midst of you. And then guess what? 
after he dies, he will be a little comforter within you. He will be a little sanctuary within you until he returns. You have to understand what he's saying, right? The kingdom has to be made without hands. It's a very spiritual thing. But what he's saying is he's talking about himself, right? He's talking about how he came about. We don't have to get it. But in John chapter three, he said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. He said, listen, you got to be born of water. Then you have to be born of the spirit. What he's saying is the water isn't good enough because it was made by hands. You were born of a man. You weren't born of God. You were a son of Adam. Adam was born of God. But every descendant that Adam got was born of a man. So therefore, you can't enter into the kingdom. But if you die and you're resurrected by Yahushua, now you're born again of the spirit. Right? Your flesh dies and then you're born again of the spirit at that point. Well, now you have entry. Now you can get in there. Right? You won't see it. It doesn't come with observation. He didn't give, look, he gave Moses an image of the temple. He gave, uh, he gave uh, uh, David the pattern of the temple in which he passed on to, uh, he passed on to um, Solomon. Right? He didn't show us none of that stuff. We didn't see none of that. And that's why, that's why the whole time Yah tells us, d- grab, grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 14. I'm sorry, 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. This is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. We're going to see this repeated throughout the book over and over and over again. That the scripture says very clearly that this is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14, right? The scripture is going to say very clearly over and over and over again don't make no darn idol, right? Don't make an idol. Don't bow down to the idols. Y'all, bow down the stuff that you made with your own hands. Your hands made that and you bow down to it. He criticizes us. He cr- criticizes us. We don't have to get all the time. But he criticizes us about uh, criticizes us about that all through the scripture about us fashioning our own gods with our own hands and bowing down to them. Yah has made it very clear that that's inappropriate. That don't make Yah thinks that makes zero sense for you to make something and then bow to it as it's God. That makes zero sense to him. Right. This is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. Watch what he says. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land where you go over to possess it. Mm -hmm. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no matter of similitude on the day of the Yahuwah spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. So when Yah spoke, you saw what? No similitude. He said you didn't see anything. You didn't see any image. You didn't see any shape. You didn't see nothing that you can make with your own hands and say, yep, that's what God looked like. Keep going. Watch this. Does he corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image in the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female? Right. You might mess around. He said, if I had showed you something when I spoke to you on Mount Horror, your butt would have messed up and corrupted yourself. And then made the likeness of anything, whether it be a male or a female. The Keep going. Of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Unless so now, how do you believe in the Messiah? How do you say, oh, Jesus Christ is Lord? And you confess if in your mind it's appropriate to have a cross. Which is the likeness of a figure. It's an engraved image. You got praying hands on the chain hanging from your your neck. Praying hands on your darn Bible. 
praying hands, a, a little statue of praying hands inside of your office. You think that's appropriate when he says not the likeness of a male or female. You got a Jesus piece. You got a picture of Jesus of what you think Jesus is hanging up on the wall. And in your mind, you thinking you believe in Yahushua. You think you believe in the Messiah. When a man told you already, you have to believe on me according to the scripture, but you giving him honor through images that the scripture told you is un, it's, just, it's forbidden. You didn't see an image. I never gave you an image because I knew you would try to make it with your own hand. He's going to make the image. It has to be made without hands. That's why he was born of a, as a virgin. Because Yah had to make the image. The image that he knew that we were going to. Look, I didn't show y'all what I look like. I didn't give y'all no image. Because I know if I did, y'all go out and be like, ooh, that looked like a man. Let me create, craft a man. He didn't show us nothing. And we made a cast. We made an animal. We don't have to get it, but uh, in Exodus chapter 32, we jumped right out, made a, 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 a golden calf. And he didn't even show us an image, and we did that. What do you think would happen if we, he just would have showed a little figure? We'd have made that thing so darn quick, he wouldn't have been able to finish talking. He'd have just got done telling us, don't make an image. Our brother would have been nailing one together. Like, it's, 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 it looked like what I saw. You know what I'm saying? It looked like what I saw right here. Bow down to it. Right? Yah makes the, grab, grab Colossians. Yah makes the image. Right? This is Colossians. Verse 1, start me off at about verse 12. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Right? Yah puts together the image for us, and then he has us bow down to the image that he made without hands. So when he carves out the stone from the mountain, that stone that becomes the kingdom that's made without hands that crushes then the beast, right? That crushes all of the systems and the, and the, and the evil processes that the world is run off of. It destroys it. That's Yahushua. Yahushua is the only image. Watch what Paul tell you. This is uh, Colossians chapter one. Give me verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Watch this. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Why he called him the invisible God? You may see him. Does he know his law? Paul know the law? You, you think Paul playing with y'all? He know the law. Paul read it. He read it just like we just read it. You saw no darn similar to. If I don't see nothing, then guess what? I don't know who was just talking. He's invisible. I hear where the voice coming from. I don't see nothing. He's invisible. He's the, has anybody seen him? No. He's an invisible God. That's why we yearn to have an image. We want to see him. That's why we create these things with our own hands. Y'all told us it's not appropriate. Why is he telling us that? I got a plan. Chill. I'm going to give you the image. Guess who that image is? The Messiah. That's what he just told you. He said he is the image of the invisible God. If you sit, grab uh, John chapter 14, watch this. John chapter 14. This is John chapter 14. When these folks were walking around looking at Yahushua, they didn't know who they was looking at. Isaiah, the scripture already told us that we were going to look at him as if he is somebody oppressed and stricken by God. That's what they were looking, they were looking at like, no, nah, man, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? So I, Isaiah told us he wasn't going to have no com comeliness. We look at him, we looking at him, oh, you know what I'm saying? Just a regular guy. Regular guy. He do some miracles, though. He just a regular guy. He's sad and troubled. You know what I'm saying? This guy seems troubled. What's his deal? You know what I'm saying? Like, why he's so serious all the time? That's how we kind of looked at him. We didn't know who we was looking at. 
We thought we was looking at just a regular guy. This is John chapter 14. Give me verse. Yeah, start me off at like verse five. This is John chapter 14, verse five. Watch what the book say. Oh, did we lose you? You hear me? Yeah. John chapter uh, 14, start me off as a black, verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Yahshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And Philip, and Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. And Yahshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and you yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And he that has seen me has seen the father. And how he said, What now? He that has seen me seen the father. And how sayest thou? This then? whole time we've been recognized, he's been recognizing the father as God. And him as the son. Why does he have to do that? I don't know. Maybe because the prophecy that was given to David through the prophet Nathan said that I will be his father and he will be my son. So that's why he continuously refers to Yah as the father and him as the son. Right. And then when asked, listen, tell us where you go. He said, man, I'm going to show you the father. And he's like, look, well, show us the father then. And he's like, listen, have you not been with me? When you see me, read it again. Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He, that has he said, me, look, no, no, read the one before that. Watch this. This is a bad man. boy. Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. He said, look, it'll be enough if you just show us the father. we be satisfied. But what he's telling him is, we'll be satisfied if you show us the father. Listen, it's the same thing. We we have seen no image. Right? The most high God didn't show us nothing. So it's like, what? You you can show us the Father? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm good if I can see what God looked like. Just show me him. Right? Y'all sure turned around, and looked at him, and he said, What now? Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He said, Show us the Father and we be good. He turned around, looked at him, and was like, Dang, y'all been around me all this time and you don't know me? I am the Father. Keep going, watch this. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how says thou then, show us the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I am the only image of the invisible God made without hands. Keep going. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the, the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And what's This is Matthew before? chapter 28. Watch this. This is Matthew chapter 28. Start me off at about verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Yahushua is the only image of God. The only way for him to be an image of God that's appropriate is he has to be created without the hands of man. So now Mary doing nothing with no intentions. No, there's no action that she took. He did nothing to create Yahushua. Yahushua was placed in her by God. Yeah. There was no man. There was no human being that had any, any interaction to his creation. Right? He was placed into her belly by the spirit of the most high God. Making him the son of God. So then when he becomes uh 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 when he when he's born, 
He becomes the image of God, the only image of God. Any other image is an idol. He's the only visible thing that represents the most high God. This is why when you see Matthew chapter 18, I mean, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, watch the book say. Yahshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So he said, Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Right? The name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. So then we have to ask ourselves, whose name is that, right? Is it three names? Is it one name? What is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? And what is the name of the Holy Spirit? Who knows, right? Well, I think we do know. This is Acts chapter uh, 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 38, right? Y'all think y'all dealing with a trinity, but that doesn't make sense. Sense. You're not dealing with a trinity. You're dealing with one image. This is why from the beginning he told you Yah is one in our law. Because you're dealing with one image. There's only one image. Right? Which means that there's only one name for the Father, for the Son, and for the Holy Spirit. Right? Indeed. And let's see what that name is. This is Acts chapter uh, 2 verse 38. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahushua the Messiah for the remission. In the name of who? Yahushua the Messiah. In the name of Yahuwah the Father, in the name of Yahushua the Messiah, and in the name of the, the Spirit. In the name of Yahushua. You won't hear that. You won't hear that throughout all of the gospel, throughout any of the epistle letters, throughout Acts, throughout Revelation. You will never hear anybody dip darn three times in water in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. How you repeat what he told you to do? He didn't tell you to repeat in the name of the Father. No, what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? And what is the name of the Holy Spirit? That's what you baptize him in when you hear the name. But you don't know the name. If you knew the name is Yahushua, he's the name. What's the name of the Father? Yahushua. What's the name of the Son? Yahushua. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Yahushua. Because he is the only image. He is the image. Just like we create an idol like a golden calf or a brass serpent or an ephod or all the different idols that we've had, right? A Molech and Baal, Baal, right? All these different idols. We create these idols to bow down to them. Y'all said that's not appropriate. Instead, y'all told us, I'll give you an idol to bow down to. And ye, he won't be created by y'all hands. He'll only be created by mine. And so he created Yahushua. And he did that by placing him in a woman, her name being Mary. And he did something new. Ain't nobody ever seen in the world when this woman encompassed a man. Right? And they called him God with us because God walked amongst us. Because he was the image of the most high God, which is why this is why Isaiah in the in the in the ninth chapter prophesied. That he would be called mighty God and everlasting father. He has to be given the names of God because guess what? Are the titles of God because guess what? He is the name of the father. He is the name of the son and he is the name of the spirit. Right? It's not Trinity. It's one. It's just Yahushua. That's it. There's nothing else. It's all Yahushua. If you don't believe on him the way the scripture says it, then do you even believe? Right. We're out here believing other gospels, other religions, other taking other spirit. When you see these people jumping around in church doing all this stuff, if you haven't seen that spirit described in our scripture, how is that the same spirit that we talking about? That means it's another spirit. Anything. Listen, Paul was right. He said, if anybody come with this other stuff. That y'all ain't never heard of. Y'all gonna put up with it. Y'all gonna like it. 
Y'all going to be interested in that stuff. We have to start being interested in what only the scriptures say. And the only way to do that is to tie ourselves to the scripture because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the scripture. And you have to believe on him as the scripture said. Or else we won't see that great day. Go ahead and send over any questions if y'all have some. Let's go ahead and pray out.